All right, today we are going to be looking at writing and graphing inequalities. Now, the first question we have is, what is an inequality? An inequality is just simply a math sentence that includes the less than symbol, greater than symbol, less than or equal to symbol, or greater than or equal to symbol. Now, when we look at an inequality, just like with an equation, we have a solution. A solution to an inequality is all of the possible values that would make that inequality true. So for example, if I gave you the inequality of x is greater than 2, well, that actually has an infinite number of solutions. For example, 2.1 is greater than 2, 2.75 is greater than 2, 3 is greater than 2, 3.5 is greater than 2, 3.98 is greater than 2, 4, 5, 6, 7, those are all greater than 2. So as you can see, there are an infinite number of numbers that would make that inequality true. So since there are so many, what we do is we, we're not ever expected to write all of those. So instead of writing them, what we actually do is we graph the solutions on a number line. Okay, so what we're going to look at is how, how do we graph them? So how do we graph a solution to an inequality? Well, first thing we do is we draw a number line and we put three values on it. We're going to put the critical value, which is the number in the inequality. We're going to put zero, and then we're going to put the opposite of that critical value. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to draw the um, number line and we're going to put those three values down. The second thing we're going to do is we're going to determine and if it is going to be an open or a closed circle on the critical value. So an open circle is used if the inequality symbol is either the less than or greater than. Now, what that means is, is an open circle means that the value that the open circle is on is not included in the solution. Okay, so I can get really close to that number. I just cannot be that number and make the inequality true. The closed circle means that you have the symbols either less than or equal to or greater than or equal to. Now, what the closed circle means is that the value is included in the solution. Okay, so an open circle, the value is not included the closed circle, the value is included. Third, what we do is we determine if the um, solution is greater than that critical number or less than. If it's greater than, we would shade to the right. If it's less than that number, we would shade to the left. Okay, so we just shade out and we draw the arrow on the end that means that those solutions are going to continue in that direction. Okay, so let's try a couple then. So graph the solution to the given inequality. All right, so the first thing we do is we draw our number line. We put arrows on the end. We're gonna make three values. So I look over here, here's my critical value is 12. So I'm gonna go 12, I'm gonna go its opposite of negative 12, and I'm gonna put zero between them. Because remember, negative numbers are to the left of zero, positive numbers are to the right. The next thing I look at is I look at the symbol itself. That symbol says greater than. So that means that I'm going to come over here and I'm going to put an open circle at the 12. Then I ask myself, where would the numbers be that are greater than 12? And the answer is they would be to the right. So I shade to the right and then I draw an arrow. And that's how we do that process. Let's try another one. So I come in here. We're going to go draw my number line. Put in my three values. I have a negative 8. I have 0 and a positive 8. So I come in here and I look at this and I say, okay, what is that symbol? That symbol is the less than. So I can't be negative 8. So I'm going to draw an open circle at negative 8. It says x is less than negative 8. So where are the numbers less than negative 8? And that would be to the left. So that is what that one would look like. Okay, let's try another one. 
so we come in here and we start off we draw our number line I put my three values I have seven negative seven and zero now this time you'll notice there's the line under it so this says X is less than or equal to seven so what that means is now I can be seven so I'm going to do a closed circle. I'm going to fill that circle in because now 7 is part of the solution. And it says X is less than 7, which would mean I would shade to the left. Okay, let's try another one. So over here, I'm going to come in. I'm going to draw my number line, my three values. So I have negative 2, 0, and 2. I look at negative 2. I look at my symbol. This time it says X is greater than or equal to negative two. So at negative two, I can be it. So I'm gonna fill that circle in. And then it says X is greater than that. So I'm gonna draw to the right and continue with the arrow. Now these next two questions, if you notice, the variable is on the right-hand side. Okay, you might ask yourself, what does that matter? Well, it does. It makes a big difference when we go to graph these. Okay, so the first thing again, I'm gonna put in my three values on my graph, five, zero, and negative five. Okay, I look at the five and I look at the symbol. Notice it can't equal it, so at five, I'm gonna put an open circle. Now, let's read this. So if we read this statement, it says five is greater than X. Well, logically thinking then, if five is greater than X, then X must be less than five. So what that means then is when I come in here to graph it, I would actually shade to the left, okay? Because five is greater than X, X must be less than five. Okay, let's try this last one here. So if I come over here, I'm gonna draw in my graph. I'm gonna put my three values. I have negative three, zero, and three. At my critical value is at uh, negative three, and I can equal it, so I'm gonna shade that in. Then I look and it says negative three is less than or equal to X. So here's my little thought bubble that I'm thinking about says if negative three is less than or equal to X, X must be greater than or equal to negative three. So that means we would shade to the right, okay? I know those last two can be kind of tricky, but if you think them through, you should be able to get the correct side graphed. Okay, so that's how we graph an inequality. That's how we graph the solution to it. Well, how do we write an inequality? Well. The easiest way I have kind of found to do this is uh, basically a three-step process. So the first thing you do is you put the variable on the left-hand side. The second thing you do is you find the critical value and you write that on the right-hand side, leaving a space for the symbol. Then we look at clue words to determine which inequality symbol. So some examples of is less than, well, that's a less than symbol. Is greater than, that's a greater than symbol. Greater than or equal to, less than or equal to, no more than, meaning that is the maximum it could be or smaller. At least means that I'm that value or bigger, okay? Now, that is not every possible way that we can represent that. Sometimes it'll be things like so-and-so is taller than or younger than or bigger than, smaller than, shorter than, those types of things. So you just have to read that sentence carefully and it will give us some clue words as to what we would do to write that inequality. All right, so let's go through and kind of pick out some different clue words. Okay, so on number one here says, in order to ride, you must be taller than 54 inches. So I'm gonna start off and I'm gonna say, okay, X, my critical value is 54. Now, the key word, as I look to, in order to ride, you must be taller than. Well, if you think about it, is 
50 inches taller than 54? Well, no, it's not. What about 54? Is 54 inches taller than 54? No, it's not, so I can't equal it. But is 60 inches taller than 54? Yes. So that would give me an answer of X is greater than 54. Okay, let's try another one. So the second one, to play, you must be younger than five years old. Okay, so I've got X, I've got five years old. Now I look at the clue words. To play, you must be younger than five. Okay, let's kind of ask ourselves those questions again. Is two younger than five? Well, yes, it is. Is five younger than five? No. Is eight younger than five? No. So that tells me X must be less than five. Okay, let's try another one. To get a license, you must be at least 16. Okay, so I have X, I have 16. So now let's look for the clue word. To get a license, you must be at least 16. Okay, so let's kind of go through our questions again. Uh, let's try 10. Is 10 at least 16? And the answer would be no. Is 16 at least 16? Yes, it is. So what that means is, is I can be equal to. Is 20 at least 16? And the answer would be yes. So this would be greater than or equal to 16. Okay, let's try another one. You can spend at most $50 at the fair. So I have X, I have 50. So now I look for the clue word. Spend at most $50 at the fair. Okay, so if I think about it, is $40 at most 50? Yes, it is. Is $50 at most 50? Yes. So that means I can equal it is $75 at most 50? And the answer would be no. So that means I would be X is less than or equal to 50. And that's how we write an inequality based off of a sentence. Okay, so now how do we write an inequality for a graph? So I look at these and I say, okay, on this first one, I have X. Now I find the dot. So this time it's an open circle at negative three. So I put the critical value there. Now, remember an open circle means I cannot equal it. So now I look, am I shading to the right or am I shading to the left? Well, I shaded to the right, which means X is greater than negative three. Okay, look at the second one here. So I start off, I look for the dot, the dot is there. So I have X, I have negative 13. Now, this time though, the dot is filled in, so that means I can equal it. Then I look, which side am I shading? And the answer is I'm shading to the left, which would mean X is less than or equal to negative 13. Okay, let's try the third one here. I have X, this time the dot is at zero. It's filled in, so that means I can equal it. And then I look, which side am I shading? And I'm shading to the right, which means that the numbers are greater than or equal to zero. On this last one, I look again, I find the dot, and it's at 20. This time it's open, which means I can't equal it, but my shading is to the left, which would make me less than that. So that's how we do it from a graph. So we write an inequality from a sentence, we can also write them from a graph. Okay, the last thing we need to figure out is how do we tell if a number is a solution to an inequality or not? Well, the way that we really do this is we just test them. No real secret to it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start in and I'm going to say, okay, here's the question. Is negative 5 greater than 3? Nope, that is not true. How about 1? Is 1 greater than 3? Nope, that's not true. How about five? Is five greater than three? Yes, five is greater than three. So five is a solution. And that's all you're doing is you're just testing them. So now let's try the next one. So if I plug the negative six in, it would say negative six is less than or equal to negative two. Is negative six less than or equal to negative two? And the answer would be yes, it is less than. Okay, let's try two. 
is two less than or equal to negative two? No, two is bigger. Well, what about four? Is four less than or equal to negative two? No, that's not true either. Four is bigger. So this time, negative six is a solution. And that's how we test them to see um, what is a solution or what's not. And that's how we write and draw um, and graph our solutions to our inequality.